going to be a pretty quick lesson in which we outline the things that can cause the demand for a resource to change and we introduce the idea that the total demand for a resource in the market is made up of the combined demands from every individual firm in that market. In our last lesson we introduced the concept of marginal revenue product as an individual firm's demand for a resource. The resource we focused on was labor. We're going to continue looking at labor markets in this lesson. So what was marginal revenue product? Marginal revenue product was the marginal product of labor times the price of the good being produced. Another way of looking at it was the change in the total revenues as a firm hires an additional worker. So what can cause marginal revenue product and what can cause the demand for a resource to change? So demand for a resource can therefore change if the price of the good being produced changes or if the productivity of the resource changes. So what are we talking about here? What could cause productivity of labor or productivity of any resource to change? Well, some things that could cause productivity to change might include improvements in technology or the training and skills of the workers, an increase in demand for the good being produced. All right, these are two things that would cause demand for the resource to increase. If the resource became more productive, firms would want to hire more of that resource. The more productive labor becomes, the more demand for labor there is. It's almost a no-brainer, right? If workers are more productive, firms want to hire more workers. Replace technology with workers, perhaps. On the other hand, if robots or technology becomes more productive, firms want to substitute robots for labor. This very same concept applies not only to the productivity of labor, but the productivity of capital and technology as well. So a simple example here, if you are a bakery owner and demand for your baked bread increases, you can charge more for your baked bread. Since you can charge more for your bread, the marginal revenue product of labor, in other words, the revenue you will earn from hiring an additional worker will increase. This would logically increase the demand for labor in your bakery. More demand for your product equals more demand for labor. On the other hand, what if the demand for bread didn't change, but the productivity of labor increased? This means for every worker you employ, you earn more revenue, since each worker contributes more additional output than they did before their productivity increased. If each worker adds more revenue to your total revenues, you're likely going to increase your demand for labor. So we say the demand for a resource, once again, is derived from both the price of the good being produced and the productivity of the resource itself. The next concept I want to introduce in this video is that the total demand for a resource and the market for that resource is made up of the sums or the combinations of all the individual firm's demands. So in the last video we showed how the marginal revenue product determines the wage rate that firms are willing to pay additional workers and that generally decreases due to the diminishing marginal returns of labor. So the demand for labor represents the marginal revenue product. I can go ahead and put a point on this graph. Let's say that at a wage rate of, I'll just put $12 here, this individual firm would wish to employ five workers. So we've got a quantity of labor demanded, put the label down here, the quantity of labor demanded at a wage rate of $12 is five workers. That's actually corresponds with the numbers we used in the last video. The question then is how many total workers would be demanded in this labor market? If this is, let's say, the market for baked goods, so this is one individual bakery. And there are, let's say, 100 bakeries in this market. This is a big city. There are 100 bakeries in this market. Then the total demand for bakers or workers at bakeries in the market is made up of the demand from each individual bakery times the number of bakeries. So we're basically just going to have a situation in which the total demand for labor at a wage rate of $12 is the horizontal sum of every individual employer's demand for labor. In other words, 500 workers will be demanded in the labor market as a whole. And what we end up with is a downward sloping market demand curve. So this is our marginal revenue product 
in the entire market for bakery employees. An individual firm will employ five workers at a wage rate of $12 an hour, but the hundred firms in this market, so we multiply basically the individual's demand by the number of firms in the market and we get the total market demand for the resource. That's pretty simple. So if there are 100 identical firms or bakeries employing bakers in this market, we multiply the number of employees at each individual bakery by the number of firms and we get a total level of employment. The market demand for a resource is the horizontal sum of the individual marginal revenue product curves of all the firms hiring workers in that market. And of course I need to add labels to my graph. So I need to put a vertical axis labor here, label here of MRP, which equals the wage rate. And we can see that if the wage rate is $12, then 500 workers would be employed. What would happen if the wage rate fell? Well, the law of demand tells us that as wage rates fall, let's say to $9, the quantity of workers and bakeries employed would increase to, in this case, around 630 workers. On the other hand, if wage rates rose, to say $15, the quantity demanded of workers would fall because the marginal revenue product of labor increases. So in this case, it would fall to around 470. So we have our demand for labor, which reflects the inverse relationship. You can see that inverse relationship between the wage rate and the quantity of labor demanded. This has to do with the law of diminishing marginal returns. Because the productivity of additional workers decreases in the short run, firms are willing to pay additional workers lower wages than those they hired before. Only if the demand for labor were to increase would firms be willing to pay higher wages. And that occurs if the demand for the product being produced increases, causing the price to rise, or if the productivity of labor increases. Here we go.